presentation was about the client outcomes tool that we're using at PACT. We're a reasonably large NGO in the south of the South Island and we're using a quality of life survey where we ask our clients about their subjective quality of life and we rate that over time to look at change over time. So relationships, community participation, goals and achievements, physical health, independence, resources, happiness and rights. But we really want to get a sense of how our clients feel about their own lives and what difference us as an organisation makes to our clients' lives. And the clients agree how much, they rate how much they agree with each statement on a, on a strongly disagreed, strongly agree scale and then provide comments when necessary. Part of the NGO workshop which was really useful because there were other NGOs presenting there who have gone through a similar process or are at different stages of this, a similar process and we're all kind of doing similar things in our own little isolated parts so it's really good to get together and to discuss where we're at. This morning watched a presentation from Steve Catty from PACT in um, South Otago um, about the outcomes um, system um, or, or tool that they've been using which is based on the Scottish Recovery Index tool and it was really really useful. And ultimately what we're about is restoring, helping anyway, restore independence and the ability for people to manage their own lives. And first of all let's remember that most things that happen to influence change in someone's life are the result of events outside the influence of either clinical or other support services. And the most um, common complaint that consumers have is the lack of information provided to them. Often this lack of information goes hand in hand with a lack of respect and a lack of belief in the person's intelligence or ability to understand. My opinion is that information is a gift um, and sharing it is one of the most generous things anyone can do for anyone else. So that tool has the capacity to invite and engage the service user into the process and become um, a participant, an, an active participant in the process of recording their information. So I'm just going to share with you some of the realities and I guess aspirations um, we have at Walsh Trust in I guess responding to our challenges around um, developing and measuring, collating, analysing um, outcome data around the services that we provide. Taking a holistic approach to reporting outcome measures and that was based in the kind of notion that outcome measures can't be considered in isolation of everything else. Um, organisational culture, philosophy, values will all impact on certainly um, how outcomes are, which outcomes are used, but also how those outcome measures are interpreted and applied. Organisational culture is absolutely fundamental, I think, to achieving and using outcomes. Our vision is about healthy lives shaping healthy communities. We have a commitment to best practice in how we deliver and provide our services. And I guess most importantly, in my mind, we have a commitment to the community in which we operate to ensure that the practices that we provide, the outcomes that we achieve, are reflective of also the, the community priorities as well. Outcomes need to be considered as an integral component of all that happens in an organisation, not on the fringe, not in a separate department. It needs to actually be integral. Uh, introducing outcome measurement is a workforce development issue requiring changes in practice and culture. Given that NGOs are an important link in providing good services, the capacity to measure inputs, outputs and outcomes as a way of demonstrating value for money is as important for NGOs as it is for DHBs.